Good morning, students. Today I am going to revise chapter number one, two, three, four, and five from history. But first of all, I will start my revision from chapter number one: how, when, and where. So, student, in chapter number one, topic number one is how important are dates. So, students. history is certainly about changes that occur over time and history is synonymous with dates and we can compare the past with present with the help of dates and we continue to associate history with the changing of dates and incident which is occurred in past we can match this on the basis of dates and we study dates to find out the sequence of events and significance of events all right but many question will arise here that which dates are correct or right related to the particular incident so students selection of date depends on the story of past and focusing on a particular set of events is important and by studying the dates reasons and consequences of events are understood in better Okay. Your next topic is how do we periodize? So students, James Mill divided the Indian history into three periods: Hindu, Muslim, and British. And according to Mill, only British rules, culture, and laws could make Indians civilized. And there are significant sources. to study the periods of events and by studying different historical evidences a string of time periods can be formed all right after that next topic is what is colonial so students when the subjugation of one country by another country leads to change in social culture economic and political sphere it leads to colonization or in another word we can say when any country started to dominate over the continent and related to culture and society that is also called are known as colonization and students know very well that british rule brought about changes in values and taste and custom and practices on indian society all right and after that next topic is how do we know administration so students one important source is the official records of the british administration and the british felt all important documents and letters needed to be preserved and many specialized institution like archives and museums were established to preserve important records and students administrative source only represents half of the picture as they all were written and maintained by british officials so students if we wants to know about history so several other sources studied together gave a better picture of administration related to past after that your next topic is sources of information 
सो स्टूडेंट्स ऑफिशियल रिकॉर्ड्स लेटर्स मेमोज सर्वेज न्यूज पेपर मैगजीन्स ऑटोबायोग्राफीज रिपोर्ट्स एक्सपीरियंसेज ऑफ ट्रैवलर्स नॉवेल्स एंड पोएम्स आर सम इम्पॉर्टेंट सोर्सेज ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन ऑफ ब्रिटिश रूल एंड अबाउट द मेथड्स ऑफ रूलिंग सिस्टम ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ ब्रिटिश एरा we can understand and know with the help of above sources of information all right and students the practice of surveying became common under colonial administration surveys like botanical zoological archaeological anthropological and forest surveys were in the list of british administration to understand the culture flora fauna and society of the indian subcontinent all right and all these sources which i told you above kept and written by both indians and british and also studied together represents several aspects of british rule and their efforts to modernize or develop or to educate indian population understood after that last topic of this chapter is what do official records not tell so students the official records do not tell about the needs of people of india and many official records hide the truth and only show one aspect of the event and the official records does not represent the fall also of british administration and also do not represent the reactions and situation of indians of every sphere of society but students from chapter number 1 you have to prepare question and answers and many important points which is already given in your book you have to prepare and learn it all right understood okay after that chapter number 2 from trade to territory so students in chapter number 2 i told you in my previous explanation that aurangzeb was the last powerful mughal ruler after the death of aurangzeb and the later rulers proved to be inefficient and foreign powers got opportunity to establish their rule in india so students in chapter number 2 topic number 1 is east india company comes east so students in 1600 east india company granting the right to trade with the east and east india company bought goods at a cheap price and sold them at higher price in europe after that cotton and silk produced in india had a big market in europe and uh, as well as paper cloths cardamom and cinnamon were in great demand in europe that's why east india company and its officials accumulated or collected wealth by the trade of india and caught attention of other european powers so students english east india company had to compete with other european companies such as french dutch and portuguese because of the powerful naval force british won over other european powers and became the super power of struggle of monopoly of trade with india next topic east india company begins trade in bengal so students as i told you above due to the profit 
In 1651, the first English factory was set up on the banks of River Hooghly, and the first English factory was opened up at Surat in 1608. Aurangzeb issued a farman granting the company the right to trade duty free, and the company tried to press for more concession and manipulate existing privileges. So students, for trading purpose, the passes were issued to company officials, but they misused these passes for private trade. So soon, because of private trade, company suffered and went into losses, losses, and um, to cure this, British government made. A strict rules and regulation. All right. After that, next topic is how did trade lead to battles? So, students, after the death of Aurangzeb, the Bengal Nawabs asserted their power and became the Nawab of Bengal. And uh, the Nawab of Bengal refused to grant the company concessions. as it was making the revenue from bengal trade less profitable but british wanted the duties to be abolished but bengal nawabs refused and british officials knew the condition of administration in bengal and tried their autonomy by use of force and next topic is the battle of plassey so students as a result of denial of trading rights on 23rd june 1757 battle of plassey was fought and it was the first major victory of english in india and after that ali wardi khan died in 1756 and sirajud daula became the nawab of bengal and after some time later in 1757 robert clive led the company's army against sirajud daula at plassey and students main reason for defeat of the nawab was that the forces led by mir jafar one of sirajud daula's commander betrayed sirajud daula and never fought the battle and on the other side mir jafar was promised by clive to be made nawab after crushing sirajud daula so student according to the deal mir jafar became the nawab of bengal after the death of sirajud daula but he was the like a puppet in the hand of british next topic the battle of baksar so students after the death and defeat at plassey sirajud daula was assassinated and mir jafar was made the nawab and mir jafar was just a puppet in the hands of britishers as i told you and in 1764 the battle of baksar was fought between britishers and mir qasim and uh, mir qasim denied the privileges given to britishers after some time later mir qasim abolished the trade duty for everyone and transferred his capital from murshidabad to munge but this was against the interest of british and they declared war against him so students finally in this battle mir qasim the nawab of bengal sirajud daula the nawab of awadh and shah alam the mughal king fought against british and british forces were led by munro and students in this battle british become 
victorious and they decided to control the territory by their own. So finally in 1765 the Mughal emperor appointed the company as the Diwan of the provinces of Bengal and they also got the Diwani rights of Bihar and Odisha. After that next topic is company officials become nabobs so student in 1764 robert clive was appointed the governor general of bengal and nabobs what was the indian version of nawab as British were leading a luxurious life similar to Nawab's and everyone was on the mercy of British now. After that next topic is company rule expand. So students as I told you above that after the defeat of Nawab's and many kings of India the process of annexation of Indian states by the East India Company from 1757 to 1857 brought some key aspects like the company rarely launched a direct military attack on as unknown territory. And after Battle of Buxar, the company appointed residents in Indian states and the company forced the state into a subsidiary alliance and the king had to put an army of British. So students, in the case of non-payment to army, the Nawab or the king had to give some part of its territory. This is known as subsidiary alliance. And students, Finally, the Nawab of Awadh and the Nizam of Hyderabad were forced to give his territories and accept the subsidiary alliances. After that, next topic is Tipu Sultan, the Tiger of Mesur. So, student, as I told you in my previous explanation that Tipu Sultan was the son of Hyder Ali, who was the ruler of Mesur and Tipu Sultan ruled Mesur from 1782 to 1799 and Tipu Sultan took the help of French to modernize his army and sent foreign delegates to gather the foreign help against British. So students, four wars were fought between Britishers and Mesur were known as the anglo Mesur Wars from 1767 to 1769 and from 1780 to 84 and from 1790 to 92 and 1799 and students finally in 1799 the Britishers won the battle of Seriranga Patnam against Mesur and Tipu Sultan was killed and defeated. After that, next topic is anglo Maratha Wars. So students, after the defeat of Tipu Sultan, Britishers also defeated Maratha in the Battle of Panipat in 1761. And they get divided in various small dynasties such as Sindhya, Holkas, Gayakwad and Bonsle. So students, three wars were fought between Marathas and British in 1782 to 1803 to 5 and 1817 to 19. And the third Maratha war was the decisive war and after this Peshwa was deposed and sent to the northern 
India on a pension. After that, next topic is claim of paramountcy or complete power. So students, as British were proving themselves as the best power across the India and they claim for paramountcy or for all over control on the whole Indian territory. And students, they started direct conquest under Lord Hastings between 1813 to 23. And students, British also wanted to capture northwest front of their empire in India. For this, they fought wars with Afghanistan and Punjab also and finally won over his territories in 1843 to 1849. After that, the policy of doctrine of lapse. So students, the under the reign of Lord Dalhousie, between 1848 to 56, they adopted the policy of lapse. And according to this policy, the rulers who does not have any legal hire could not pass on their property to the adopted son and it would be taken over by British. So students, you have already heard the story of Jhansi, Satara and Sambalpur were annexed by this policy. And last, sorry, last topic of this chapter is administration under British rule. So students in 1773, Warren Hastings became the Governor General of Bengal and control the governors of the presidencies of Madras and Bombay and separate civil and criminal courts were set up under the supervision of collector and uh, finally new set of laws were compiled by muftis and brahmins for the religious matter or to solve out the religious matter of Indian people. Alright. So students in chapter number three ruling the countryside your first topic is the company becomes the Divan which uh, already I told you in my above explanation of chapter number two that on 12 August 1765, the Mughal Emperor appointed the East India Company as the Diwan of Bengal and uh, as Diwan, the company became the chief financial administrator of the territory under its control. After that, next topic is revenue for the company. So students, now the company made effort was to increase the revenue as much as it could and buy fine cotton and silk cloth as cheap as possible. And students, within five years, the value of goods bought by the company in Bengal doubled. Now, the revenue collected in Bengal could finance the purchase of goods for export. So students, after that, Bengal economy was facing a deep crisis because artisans were deserting villages and they were being forced to sell their goods to the company at very, very cheap prices and Indian agriculture cultivation also showed signs of decline and in 1770 a terrible famine killed 10 million people in Bengal.
after that next heading is the need to improve agriculture so students important company officials began to feel that investment in land had to be encouraged and agriculture had to be improved that's why in 1793 company introduced the permanent settlement and according to the permanent settlement the rajas and talukdars were recognized as zamindars and they were asked to collect rent from the peasants and pay revenue to the company which was fixed by the british company permanently and this policy is known as permanent settlement all right so students this policy would ensure a regular supply of money or revenue to the company at the same time and the zamindars to invest in improving the land encouraged by the britishers to earn or for earn more and more revenue from the peasants or the farmers of india after that next topic is the problem but the students problem was related to the permanent settlement are zamindars were not investing in improving the quality of land and the revenue was fixed and too high for the zamindars that's why as long as the zamindars could earn by giving out their lands to tenants and also they were not interested in improving the land and uh, on the other hand in the villages the cultivator found the system was extremely oppressive for them all right after that students next topic is a new system is devised so students by the starting of 19th century many of the company officials were convinced that the system of revenue had to be changed again to meet the growing expenses or need and next topic is mahalwari settlement or mahalwari system so students finally a new mahalwari system or settlement passed by the british company and the collectors went from village to village to estimate the land revenue that each village or mahal had to pay okay and the charge of collecting the revenue and paying it to the company was given to the village headman instead of the zamindar and students this system came to be known as the mahalwari system or mahalwari settlement all right after that next topic is the munro system so students again the new system that was devised came to be known as the rayatwari system and it was tried on a small scale by alexander red and it was developed by thomas munro which was gradually extended all over south india after that next system rayatwari system and its problem so students again a new system rayatwari system was 
implemented by the British company and the settlement had to be made directly with the cultivators or rayats who had tilled the land for generations and uh, Britishers thought that they should act as paternal father figures protecting the rayats under their charge. So students to increase the income from land revenue officials fixed too high a revenue demand. But as you know very well that due to the very very oppressive all the system or policies that's why peasants were unable to pay riots and they started to move out countryside and villages became deserted in many regions of india next point crops for Europe. So students, the British started to force cultivators in various parts of India to produce other commercial crop like jute in Bengal, tea in Assam and sugarcane in the United Provinces and now in Uttar Pradesh and wheat in Punjab, cotton in Maharashtra and Punjab and rice in Madras. And also British used a variety of methods for increasing cultivation of crops that they needed. And one important crop was indigo which had a great demand worldwide. All right. After the students, you know very well that that time indigo was in high demand. And your next topic is why the demand for Indian indigo. So students, so students in topic why the demand for Indian indigo. By the starting of 13th century, Indian indigo was being used by cloth manufacturers in Italy, France and Britain to dye cloth. But the price of indigo was very high and European cloth manufacturer had to depend another plant called wad to make violet and blue dyes which were yellow and dull. Therefore, Claude Dias preferred indigo as a dye and uh, the French began cultivating indigo in St. Dominic in the Caribbean island and the Portuguese in Brazil and the English in Jamaica and the Spanish in Venezuela. So students finally between 1783 and 1789 the production of indigo in the world fell by half and cloth dyers in Britain started looking for new sources of indigo supply and uh, due to this Britain turns to India. Students as you know very well that the company in India looked for ways to expand the area under indigo cultivation and by 1810 near about 95 percent of the indigo imported into Britain was from India. All right next topic is how was indigo cultivated? So students there were two main system of indigo cultivation that time was in India niche and rayati and in niche cultivation some problem was related that time and these are 
the planter produce indigo in lands that he directly controlled and the planters found it difficult to expand the area under niche cultivation and indigo could be cultivated only on fertile lands which were already densely populated and a big or large plantation required a large number of labor at a time when peasant were busy with their rice cultivation and it also required many plow and bullocks so till the late 19th century planters were therefore reluctant to expand the area under niche cultivation after that next topic is indigo on the land of rayas so students under the rayati system the planters pressurized the village headman to sign the contract on behalf of the rayats and those who signed the contract got cash in advance from the planters at low rates of interest to produce indigo but the rayat to had to cultivate indigo at least 25% of the area under his holding that condition was kept by the british planters in front of indian peasants and when the crop was delivered to the planter after the harvest a new loan was given to the rayat and student the price provided to the peasants were the indigo they produce was very low and the cycle of loans never ended after that next topic is blue rebellion and after so students in 1859 the indigo rayats felt that they had the support of the local zamindars and village headman in their rebellion against the planters and students as the rebellion is spread against the british system or policy the government set up the indigo commission to inquire into the system of indigo production and the commission held the planters guilty and criticized them for the very oppressive methods which they used with indigo cultivators and students finally after the revolt indigo production now shifted their operation to bihar and uh, exactly that time mahatma gandhi visit in 1970 mark the beginning of the champaran movement against the indigo planters all right after that chapter number 4 tribal dikus and the vision of golden age so student in my previous explanation as i told you about the lives and custom and rituals about the tri tribes and uh, that were very different from those led by brahmans and they also did not had any social distinctions so students in mid 1870s besa was born in a family of mundas a tribal group that lived in chota nagpur plateau and he is known to oppose british interference in the name of administration in forest areas and revolted against the britishers in 1895 till his death in 1900 after that your next topic is how did tribal groups left so students by the 19th century tribal people in different parts of india were involved in a variety of activities 
such as they were doing subsistence farming and somebody were herding and uh, they are also collecting forest products etc so students your next topic is sambar jhoom cultivators so students jhoom cultivation that is also known as shifting cultivation was done by the tribals on small patches of land mostly in the forest covered area and bewar which is known as madhya pradesh this is also a under name of shifting cultivation and students the cultivators cut the tree tops to allow to allow sunlight to reach ground and burn the vegetation on the land to clear it for cultivation and uh, once the crop was ready and harvested they moved to another plot of land and left that field fellow for several years for the maintenance of soil fertility and students you have already learned in geography this type of cultivation is considered to be the primitive type of cultivation all right and next topic is some were hunters and gatherers so students in many regions of india tribal groups live by hunting of animals and gathering forest products uh, in khons who were hunters and gatherers living in the forest of odisha and they used many forest shrubs and herbs for medicinal purpose and sold forest product in the local market to earn some money bagas who lived uh, in central india reluctant to do work for other and students you know very well that tribal groups often needed to buy and sell in order to be able to get the goods that were not produced within the locality and this led to their dependence on traders and money lenders and students you know very well that tribals were mainly dependent on barter system after that next topic some herded animals so students in many tribal groups who lived in the heart of forest covered area also herding and rearing animals and gathering forest products they were also pastoralists who moved with their herds and cattle from one region to another region due to the change in the season for example the van gujars of punjab hills and labadis of andhra pradesh who were cattle herders and the gaddis of kullu were shepherd and the bakarwals of kashmir rear goats they are all moving here and there in search of food and fodder for their cattle due to the changing in season and students after some time later by british laws grazing on forest land was stopped and it became the reason of this content for tribals after that next topic is some took to settled cultivation so students in many tribal groups had begun to settle down instead of moving from one place to another place and they began to use the plow and gradually got right over the land where they lived on okay and a few tribes such as mundas considered the clan right over land and assumed the land to be belong to the whole clan 
but British officials saw settled tribal groups like the Gonds and the Santhals as more civilized than hunter gatherers or shifting cultivators. So students for extraction of huge revenue was also done from the tribals and in case of non-payment of revenue their lands were taken away and it became the reason of discord and against the Britishers policy. After that next topic is how did colonial rule affect tribal lives? So students you know very well that the lives of tribal groups changed during British rule and uh, their faith were tried to be changed to Christian missionaries and uh, their faith tried and changed by the Christian missionaries and many laws related to forest were had direct impact on their traditional rights all right so students your next topic is what happened to tribal chiefs so students as you know very well that before the arrival of the British tribal chiefs enjoyed economic power and also the right to administer and control their territories but under the British rule the functions and powers of the tribal chiefs change and as they were allowed to keep their land titles but lost their administrative rights and were forced to follow laws whatever made by British officials in India. So students now you can understand the whole system of forest administration also taken by the or took over by the British. After that next point what happened to the shifting cultivators? Students as I told you British were very uncomfortable with the shifting cultivators because they were they were unable to receive revenue exactly from the shifting cultivators and Britishers always wanted to regular revenue that's why the British effort to settle Jhum cultivators was not very successful in northeastern part of India and also land was not fertile enough and cultivators started protests against the British policy. That's why the British anyhow had to allow them the right to carry on shifting cultivation in some parts of the forest. And in most of the central parts, shifting cultivation was prohibited and lands were assigned to do the cultivation. Okay? After that, next topic is forest laws and their impact. So students, the life of tribal groups was directly connected to the forest as know very well that and British extended their control over all India and forest regions of India also. That's why reserve forest were introduced by the Britishers for producing timber which the British wanted but for the purpose of cheap labor the forest village was settled within the forest all right and in reserve forest people were not allowed to move freely or practice jhum cultivators 
and this law impacted the very survival of the tribals as you know very well that they were mainly depend on forest and its product that's why many tribal groups reacted against the colonial forest laws and rose in an open rebellion after that next topic is the problem with trade so students you know very well that during the 19th century tribal groups found the traders and money lenders were coming into forest and offering cash loan to the tribal people and asking them to work for wages and this led the trapping of tribals in the cycle of debt and started to increase the misery of their life also and students that time indian silk was in great demand in european market during the 18th century and the santhals of hazari bagh reared cocoons and the traders spent in their agents who gave loans to the tribal people and collected the cocoons so students the coconut were exported to burdwan or gaya to sold at five times the price after that this system was again very oppressive and problematic for the tribal people next topic is the search for work so students the plight of the tribals who had to go far away from their homes in search of work was even worse and the tribals were recruited in large numbers to work tree plantations and mine through contractors with low wages and prevented them from returning home after that next topic is a closer look so students the tribal groups rebel in different part of the country against the change in laws and restriction on their traditional practices and many new taxes they had to pay and exploited by the traders money lenders and petitioners that's why many uprising we can see during the time of british era against the british policy these are coal uprising from 1831 to 32 santhal uprising from 1855 so on and munda uprising between 1895 to 1900 and after that bastar uprising in 1910 next topic is story about birsa munda so students you know very well that a movement began under the leadership of birsa munda and uh, british officials who were worried as the political aim of the birsa movement and uh, whatever done by the british missionaries in india and money lenders hindu landlords and the government and set up a munda raj with birsa at its head so in 1895 birsa munda was arrested but he was released in 1897 and he tortured the village to get sorry and he toured all over the tribal villages to gather support and urged people to destroy ravan raj or dikus and the europeans as i told you the meaning of dikus means outsiders and uh, urge for the establishment of kingdom and his and finally 1900 besa died of 
and the event get it up and last topic of this chapter is affects effects of uprising so students british made the laws stricter so that money lenders could not exploit the tribes by snatching away their lands and it showed the power of tribals that they can also fight for their rights and could be heard okay so students finally chapter number 5 is when people rebel so students your first topic is policies and the people and uh, how nawab lose their power so students since the mid 18th century nawabs and rajas gradually lost their authority honor and power and residents had been stationed in many courts the freedom of the rulers reduced and their armed forces disbanded and their revenues and territories taken away by stages by the british many ruling families tried to negotiate with the company to protect their interest however the company confident of its superiority and military powers turned down these pleas as i told you about the subsidiary alliance and doctrine of lapse so students in 1801 a subsidiary alliance was imposed on avad and in 1856 it was taken over in the name of british rule was needed to ensure proper administration and finally in 1856 governor general canning decided that bahadur shah zafar would be the last mughal king okay after that next topic is the peasants and the sepoys so students in the countryside peasants and zamindar were angry with the high taxes and the very oppressive methods of revenue collection and many peasants failed to pay back their loans to the money lenders and gradually lost the lands they had till for generations finally the indian sepoys were unhappy about their pay allowances and condition of service and also some new rules violated their religious sense and beliefs such as crossing the sea means results in losing their religion and caste and sepoys also reacted to what was happening in the countryside so the anger of peasants common people and sepoy is spread quickly in over the subcontinent of india okay after that next topic is response to reform so students the british passed laws to stop the practice of sati and encourage the remarriage of widows english language and education was also promoted by the british and the company allowed christian missionaries to function freely and even own land and property in india so in 1850 a new law was passed to make conversion 
to Christianity easier and allowed an Indian who had converted to Christianity to inherit the property of his ancestor. Okay? Next topic is through the eyes of the people and uh, mutiny becomes a popular rebellion. So students, a massive rebellion that started in May 1857 and threatened the company's presence in India. And sepoys mutinied in several places beginning from Meerut and a large number of people from different sections of society rose up in rebellion. And next topic is from Meerut to Delhi. So students, as I told you in my previous explanation that on 29th March 1857, a young soldier Mangal Pandey was hanged to death for attacking his officer in Barakpur. And some days later, some sepoys of the regiment at Meerut refused to do the army drill using the new cartridge which were suspected of being coated with the fat of cows and pigs okay and uh, after that on 9 may 1857 85 sepoys were dismissed from service and sentenced to 10 years in jail for disobeying their officers all right after that, on 10th May, the soldiers marched to the jail in Meerut and released the imprisoned sepoys. And they attacked and killed many British officers and captured their guns, arms and ammunition and set fire to the buildings and properties of the British and declared war on the foreigners or Britishers. After that, on the morning of 11th May, sepoys of Meerut reached Delhi and the regiments stationed in Delhi also rose up rebellion against Britishers. And the soldiers forced their way into the Red Fort and proclaimed Bahadur Shah Zafar as their leader. And student, the aging emperor accepted the demand and wrote letters to all the chiefs and rulers of the country to come forward and organize a confederacy of Indian states to fight the British. After that, next topic is the rebellion spreads. So students, after some week later, regiment after regiment, rebellion, which is started by the sepoys, and took off to join other troops at nodal points like Delhi, Kanpur and Lucknow. After them, the people of the towns and villages also rose up in rebellion and rallied around local zamidars and chiefs. Like many famous leaders led troops at different places like Nana Sahib in Kanpur, Bajiz Qadr in Lucknow, Rani Lakshmi Bai in Chansi, Kuwar Singh in Bihar and Bakht Khan in Bareilly. So the British were greatly outnumbered by the rebel forces and were defeated in a number of battles. But students, the company fights back. After all the revolts, the company brought reinforcement from England, passed new laws, 
so that the rebels could be convicted with ease and they moved into the storm centers of the revolt and finally in september 1857 delhi was recaptured from the rebel forces and bahadur shah zafar was tried in court and sentenced to life imprisonment along with his wife begum zinat mahal in rangoon in october 1858 and students bahadur shah zafar died in the rangoon jail in november 1868 and again lucknow was taken in march 1858 and rani lakshmi bai bai was defeated and killed tatya tope was captured and tried and killed in april 1859 and finally the british also tried their best to win back the loyalty of the people and finally they announced rewards for loyal landlords would be allowed to continue to enjoy traditional rights over their lands but the students sadly hundreds of sepoys rebellions nawab and rajas were tried and hanged after that the last point of this chapter is aftermath so students by the end of 1859 the british had regained control all over the country and after that some important changes introduced by the british government after 1858 so students number 1 is the british parliament passed a new act in 1858 and transferred the power of the east india company to the british crown and a number of british cabinet was appointed secretary of state for india and made responsible for all matters related to the governance of india and next point is all ruling chiefs of the country were assured that their territory would never be annexed in future and they were allowed to pass on their kingdom to their highest including adopted son and the indian rulers were to hold their kingdoms as subordinate of the british crown okay after that next point is the proportion of indian soldiers in the army would be reduced and the number of european soldiers would be increased next point the land and property of muslims was confiscated and on a large scale and they were treated with suspicions and hostility because britishers were very angry against the muslims because they had said that Muslims were responsible for the 1857 revolution by Indian people. And next one is the British decided to respect the customary religious and social practices of the people in India. And the last point is policies were made to protect landlords and zamindars and given them security of rights over the lands but the students from chapter number 4 and 5 you have to prepare especially all the points and question and answer okay so students you have to prepare chapter number 1 2 3 4 and 5 with question answers and whatever important points dates and incident given in your book from chapter number 1 to 5 you have to prepare for very good results so student listen my revision very very carefully and anywhere if you have the 
doubt or confusion then contact me all right thank you and have a nice day